Welcome back to Daybreak. This is John Mark Freeman of the Greater Coosa Valley Chamber of Commerce. And we are here to do our key member of the month. Of course, we do this on the first Wednesday of the month, early in the morning. Have to get up at about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning to get stuff ready, but it is okay. We're going to tell you a little bit about what's happening in the Greater Coosa Valley area, and then we will get with my special guest this morning. So I want to tell you a couple of events that is happening in the Greater Coosa Valley area. Tell you a little bit about the Parks and Rec. They do a lot of things. We're getting into the holiday season. We got Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. So there's a lot of different things going on the next few months so kind of want to keep you in the loop so the children's work parks and rec on october the 7th from 9 a.m to 2 p.m they're going to be having the annual pumpkin festival and then on november the 18th from 9 a.m to 2 p.m we are going to have a Childersburg community yard sale and then on december the 21st starting at 6 p.m it's just a big hit with everybody. They have their dinner with Santa. That's a great time where a whole bunch of little kids get to come out and have dinner with Santa and, and I guess tell them what they want for Christmas and hopefully they will end up getting it. We have a few member events coming up the next few months. Uh, if you remember two months ago I had Miss uh, Dr. Roxanne Weaver come on board with us and told a little bit about Childersburg Family Dental. They're going to be having their Childersburg Family Dental free dentist day on October the 20th. You need to give them a call if you want to get, I think they're doing either free clean or extraction for that day. You have to get on schedule with them and you can get it done for free. They just want to get back to the community. And Childersburg's location, the Renaissance, um, right down in downtown Childersburg is going to be having a trunk or treat and that's going to be on October the 31st from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. A city event that happens every single year that's such a such a huge hit and really kicks off the Christmas season. It is the Christmas tree lighting and that is going to be on November the 28th starting at 6 p.m. And lastly, we have a couple chamber events that we'll talk about. We have our chamber coffee that we do every single month. Our next one is going to be September the 12th, and it's going to be at Wolf Furniture that by the ABC store in downtown, or well, not downtown, off of Highway 280 in Childersburg. That is Wolf Furniture. We have our next chamber coffee there September the 12th and that will start at 8.30 in the morning, usually lasts about 30, 45 minutes, a great time of networking and getting to know your peers and, and what we can do as a community to work together. Great time of networking and a great time just to make show face and meet some people, and it's always a ton of fun, one of my favorite things I get to do. And lastly, our biggest event that we do in this season from the Chamber is we have our Christmas Parade. We actually had our first committee meeting yesterday afternoon and we made it public that we are going to be on December the 14th starting at 6 p.m. Our board and my committee decided to make a decision to move it from the third Thursday historically for the past who knows how long we've done it on the third Thursday of the month and we as the board decided to change it to the second Thursday. It was just to get the schools involved and the community wanted to see it moved up and I, I was talking to my predecessor a few weeks ago and talked about how he never wanted to shake things up so he kept it on the third Thursday and I told him I said Tom well I'm the exact opposite so I'm going to shake things up a little bit so we decided to move it on the second Thursday so that is going to be December the 14th starting at 6 p.m. we will have our annual Childersburg Christmas Parade. So speaking about a little bit about Childersburg, I, you know, in the Greater Coosa Valley area, the first chamber coffee I, we, I actually ever got to attend as being the new president and CEO was with our special guest this morning. And so we have with us this morning, Carmelitha Ford. Hey, so excited to have you this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you. And it has been a pleasure to get to know you. I, I mean, right off the gates, I, I, I remember sitting down in my first board meeting ever that yes. I had to, that I had to lead. And mm -hmm. they and I said, well, where's our next chamber coffee? Because they already had this one scheduled. And they said, this would Miss Carmelitha Ford. And I said, Okay, well, I need to get to know her, and it's been a pleasure ever since then. <laughs> thank you, and it's likewise, likewise here. Um, I'm just excited to be here today. I thank yes, you for inviting me. Of course. Um, and, you know, we just got so many good things going on. Yes, ma'am. Well, Carmelita, to get started this morning, tell us just a little bit about who you are. Okay, so I am the CEO and founder of Atia Corporation, mm -hmm. um, but the reason why I'm here today is because I'm the president of Silicaga Area Habitat yes, for Humanity. So, um, yeah, it's basically I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a small mm -hmm. business owner in the area. We have multiple, well, various businesses in the area, um, and so we are community driven, you yeah. know. Um, we cater to the community, we service the community, um, and 
we also like to, you know, just let the community know um, by doing business within the community, we like to let them know that, that we're here for them and we appreciate their business as well. Absolutely. That's so, that is so awesome. That small business mindset is so important, especially in small communities yes. like Childersburg and even Sylacauga. Sylacauga is quite much, it's a little bit bigger than Childersburg, but yeah. still, I mean, we're still considered the small town. Right. Well, you know, you know I originated in uh, Childersburg. Mm -hmm. um, both of my businesses were in Childersburg um, in that community, and we had such an amazing time, and again, with all the different chamber meetings yeah. and, you know, just being involved, um, networking with other businesses owners as well and just getting to know everybody it's been an amazing experience absolutely so you are the new president CEO of, of habitat of the Silicaga area habitat for humanity can you tell everybody what habitat for humanity it's caused and what it's what it's about so habitat um, for humanity is basically giving people a better place to live mm -hmm. you know um, taking um, your area um, um, uh, within the community and um, making it better. We, we go in, we build from ground up, um, mm -hmm. we build homes from ground up. We also do, one of the, the best things that I've been working with, um, projects that I've been working on lately is repairs for veterans. We okay. do a lot of repairs awesome. for vet veterans um, and um, as well as we will uh, purchase homes to re rehab it, you know, mm -hmm. re rehabilitate and to renovate. And it allows us to be able to put um, low income housing, yeah. um, our low income housing community, we're able to put them into better places of living. That's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. So I'm excited about it and um, I'm just really glad to be able to have this opportunity. Um, we mm -hmm. actually have a, a really cool project coming up okay. in Childersburg. So I'm sure we'll talk about that. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so um, you had this great opportunity. Well, why did you decide to join Habitat for Humanity? Okay, so I recently joined Habitat for Humanity in um, June of this year, yes, okay, and it came by way of accident. I <laughs> promise you it was a big mistake. No, it wasn't a mistake. It was an accident. It literally dropped in my lap. Absolutely. Um, I, I had a, um, an administrator that mm -hmm. worked for my company, and um, she was in a low, she's in a low-income um, housing environment. And, um, it, you know, through tears and just sharing, you yeah. know, just being, um, sharing some of her story and testimony with me, um, I basically just asked her, have you ever heard of Habitat for Humanity? You know, mm -hmm. you, you got your head on right, right? Yeah. Your credit is pretty good, right? And so, um, you know, you need a better place to live outside mm -hmm. of, you know, the, the communities that we have until we get on our feet. Um, you know, so I asked her if she heard about it. She said no, she hadn't. We made a couple of phone calls, yeah. and next thing you know, it's like, how did I become the president, <laughs> right, right? So they were actually considering closing down the Sylacauga area habitat because, you mm -hmm. know, volunteers, we are volunteer driven. Okay. Um, we, we, all of our workers are volunteer based. Um, the entire community drives this program. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's through like donations and things of that nature. So what happens is um, if at any chance that you have someone that wants to become a habitat um, mm -hmm. homeowner or needs a repair or um, they just want to come and be a part of the committees, then, you know, that's something that we're open to, and we decided just to keep it open. That's, that's awesome. Yep. So um, tell us a little bit more about, you know, Habitat for Humanity's mission and, and kind of how people can get plugged in and get involved. Okay. So the mission is basically, it's, it's real simple. It's okay. giving people a better place to live, um, and it's making their environment conducive to the point where they can raise their children in good, mm -hmm. you know, solid communities, safe communities, um, you know, and so it's a lot out there that can be revitalized, but hey, if we can just, you know, gain control of just one home or, you know, save one family, you yeah. know, that that's our goal, that's our mission. We're Christian-based where, um, you know, we believe in putting God first before everything. Mm -hmm. We believe in the power of prayer and just knowing that whatever situation the family is in, that we will do our best along with the community to, to give them a better way of life. That's awesome. Um, and so as far as the habitat is concerned, we are governed by the International um, Habitat for Humanity. So this is just not a, a program that, you know, we just decided to start, decided to start up. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's, it was actually founded, the Habitat for Humanity was founded in 1965, mm -hmm. but in the Sylacauga area, it was in 1997. Okay. You know, so um, 
I, I just believe that it's a it's a powerful program. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Um, James Adams okay. um, was m our former president, you know, and after many meetings and many conversations with him, he thought that I would be a great fit. It's awesome. 1997 is an incredible year because that was the year that I was born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It was a holiday year. <laughs> all year. <laughs> is, I get told all the time how young I am, so I, I like to throw that in any time I can. So where is Habitat for Humanity located and what are their hours of operation? Okay, so we are located um, actually right next door to the post office in Sylacauga. Okay. So we are located at 200, um, where, um, I, I'm sorry, our address is 7 South Broadway Avenue mm -hmm. in Sylacauga Avenue um, on Sila in Sylacauga, Alabama. Yeah. And um, I'm sorry, totally nervous. <laughs> but at the same time, um, we are here local. Uh -huh. um, and anytime anyone would like to come in and fill out an application or maybe they would like to go online and find out some more information about us, um, they can reach us at uh, SylacaugaHabitat.com. Okay. Um, being a volunteer based with um, getting their projects done, how many employees does Habit the Silicaga Area Habitat for Humanity have? So we don't necessarily call them employees mm -hmm. because everybody is volunteer. Yeah. Um, however, Atia Corporation, which is one of my companies, um, they um, we sponsor and donate our administrative services okay. to the habitat. So um, each of our employees may take like maybe an hour or two out of their day and contribute to volunteering their services as far as like public relations, mm -hmm. you know, um, family services, um, things of that nature. It's every every aspect of Silicaga area habitat has a function within, and so we have administrators that volunteer their time. That's awesome that you're able to kind of use one of your organizations to help another. Yeah, That's yeah, really cool. Yeah. Um, is there any events coming up with the Silicaga Area Habitat for Humanity that our GCV residents need to know about? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so let me just tell you something. One of our biggest celebrations at this time is that we have um, purchased a home in Childersburg. Okay. We have purchased a, a home. Um, it's a home that has to be re renovated, completely renovated. Um, we have to go in and just restructure the entire inside of the home. So we have recently purchased that home and we're so excited. It's probably going to take us about a year for this project. Okay. But at the same time, within that year, what happens is we, um, we take in applicants. We take okay. in applications and these applicants, um, they get screened um, from the the you know because it's actually a true mortgage mm -hmm. okay and um, so from their credit to their background everything um, that we need to know to get them qualified for the habitat loan um, that's what we do throughout okay. the year so we're excited about it that's we're awesome. excited especially in the area in of Childersburg, Childersburg right? that'll be nice <laughs> taking that taking one of those older houses fixing it up making it look nice and yeah. then putting somebody in need in it that's, that's yes. an awesome and thing. it's our very, my very first um, project um, you know I have a whole new administration mm -hmm. um, Denise Stone she's also yeah. a local business owner here she's the vice president and so um, we have Brian Dix he's the manager of the um, construction in sight. Okay. I mean, we just to name a few, um, La Unit is stale. We have so many on our board that are just excited about this first time project. That is exciting. Um, so for the rest of 2023, we only got a few months left over. Are there any more? Are there any goals you hope to reach? Hope to reach for 2023? Yes. So donations are big. Donations are big for us. Um, you know, you can go online and give uh, donations through the the website SilicagaHabitat.com. You can also call in. Um, a lot of people are going to start seeing our donation cards uh -huh. coming out, requesting. Um, we're trying to partner with um, businesses like Home Depot, Lowe's, yeah. and things of that nature, so that we can just kind of get the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. So our goal is really. To to get our donations up okay. so that we will be able to start our project and be able <laughs> be able to be successful within a year. Absolutely. Well, you hear that, um, Greater Coosa Valley residents and businesses and organizations, if you have a little bit of extra money to and you want to help a good cause, please, please reach out to Ms. Carmelita yes, and Silicaga Area Habitat for Humanity. So one thing I like to do to, to kind of end off the discussion is um, I think it's so important to celebrate success stories because, mm -hmm. um, you know, some days it, we can get run down with a with a bad day and yes. and it's so easy it's so easily to kind of look at all the bad so i like to sometimes take a moment and, and look at well what are the good things that are happening so what's yeah. the best success story that you have had in your short tenure at habitat for <laughs> humanity that you can share 
I think the best success story is being able to regain and reopen mm -hmm. um, to, to revitalize the program. I think yeah. that's the biggest successful story that we have. And then we have an amazing administration at this mm -hmm. time. Um, we, they're all new faces um, and they have um, ambition, you know, and so I think that's one of the biggest things that we could have ever done that, that's great for the community. Yeah. It's not to allow this thing to show, to close down mm -hmm. and to revitalize it, modernize it, bring it up that. to date, <laughs> all that kind of stuff, and um, and just really move forward. And we we I can't wait a year from now to be back here with you, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, celebrate the the release of this new Habitat home that we're going to be releasing. That's awesome. I, I definitely understand that. Uh, I had the same feeling when I took over from for the chamber. Mm -hmm. You know. Chamber was such a great organization, but it, it needed some revitalization. And, yeah. and I've been in there now 15, 16 months, and it's going to be a little bit of work, but if anybody mm -hmm. can do it, I think you definitely can do it, Ms. Carmelita. Can too. <laughs> um, any final remarks that you want to tell anybody um, before we get out of here? Um, I just want to say, you know, congratulations to the community because we're back, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're awesome. here, we're back, yeah. Well, this, again, this is John Mark Freeman from the Great Acusa Valley. Chamber of Commerce and Ms. Carmelita Ford from the Silicaga area, Habitat for Humanity. I want to say thank you so much for listening in this morning and stay tuned for more Daybreak.